Hey, greetings, great agents. Steve Schleter with Never Ending Referrals. And hey, we're here at video number two of Winterizing Your Business for Success, The Care Call. You know, in the previous video, we set the foundation. We talked about our messages that must match the market. We talked about the MOFR. Uh, we talked about the trust triangle. As we get into the care call today, we're going to look at the right side of that trust triangle called empathy. How do we have people experience us caring about them, caring about their well-being in a genuine, authentic way? And, and by the way, even the people we've not talked to in forever, this the, the framework I'm going to give you uh, is quite easy to have with those folks uh, as well. So let's get right into this. And uh, I'm going to share my screen. And the first thought I want to bring to bear is this, and it comes from Susan Scott and her book, Fierce Conversations. And Susan shares with us, she says, the conversation is the relationship. So guys, if I want to be in relationship with my database in, in a way of a trusted advisor, I've got to have those conversations that position that. And I have to show up having them experience that. And so the conversation, well, the conversation is the relationship. And to demonstrate just how powerful this can be, I want to share with you an experience I had. One conversation with a great agent who made all the difference in one conversation in the relationship that we had. And so I'm driving down the interstate and my phone rings and on my dash, it says Barbara DeLamo. And it's a 210 area code, which is San Antonio where I live. And yet I'm not recognizing the name. My first thought is who's Barbara? I, you know, I must know her, you know, she's up here on my display. She must be in my contacts. And so I pressed the button and I took the call. And of course, uh, I'm, I'm going to have to use Barbara's voice for effect. And and by the way, I probably did what you would do. And I acted like I knew who Barbara was. And I'm going like, hey, Barb, what's going on? And she goes, well, hi, Steve. And I'm going, yeah, and what can I do for you, Barbara? And she goes, well, hey, I was just calling to wish you a happy birthday. And I go, well, Barbara, thanks. My birthday is not for another three weeks, though. And then she goes, I know I wanted to be the first one. She, she goes, am I the first one? I go, yeah, you sure are. And, you know, and then she, and again, I'm going, who the heck is Barbara? I, I, I don't know who this is. She's wishing me a happy birthday three weeks early. And then uh, Barbara says, Steve, you know, I, I took bold from you uh, back in 2009, the first bold y'all did in San Antonio. Are you still coaching bold? And I said, yeah, I sure am. And we talked about bold for a little bit and where I'd been, what was going on. And then uh, she said, you know, I know when you were in San Antonio, you had a girlfriend that lived here, she came and sponsored one of our bowls. She goes, Are you guys still together? And I said, Yeah, we sure are. And she goes, What was her name again? I said, Shelly. And she asked about Shelly and, you know, and was Shelly still with that vendor who was sponsoring us? And uh, we had a little conversation about that. And she, you know, then went on and said, You know, I know you're originally from this area and you talked about maybe moving back to San Antonio. Did you ever make the move? I said, Yeah, I sure did. I did that. Uh, gosh, been two years ago or so. And she goes, man, I guess I was a little late on that one. I said, of course, Barbara, I represented myself. And um, and she goes, well, what are you loving about San Antonio? You know, what have you been doing for fun? And we talked about San Antonio. She gave me a referral to a great brunch place. And um, then she said, um, you know, what kind of uh, big plans you and Shelly have coming up? And we talked about a trip to Egypt and a couple other trips. And you know, the whole conversation was, gosh, maybe maybe six minutes. And in six minutes, I went from who the heck was Barbara to feeling completely connected with Barbara. Now, we'll talk about what happened in that conversation that facilitated that. But there's a more important moral of the story. It was a great conversation. It was connection uh, at a high level. And yet, here's what I realized as I hung up the call with Barbara, feeling really good about the call, the conversation. I noticed on the display that it didn't say Barbara DeLamo. It said maybe Barbara DeLamo. And on an iPhone, that means she's not in my contact. She's in my correspondence. And I'm curious, well, you know, I can't even place this person at first and couldn't pick them out of a lineup. And have I been communicating with them? And so let me share with you what I found, because I went home and I pulled up my email to see what had been happening with Barbara. And here's what I found. 
I had been getting an email every three weeks or so on average for seven years. Let that one sit for a second. Every three weeks for seven years. And what was my response when she showed up on my dash? Who the heck is Barbara? The conversation is the relationship. Because here's what happened. Two weeks later, I get Barbara's next email. And what did I do this time? Saw it. I opened it. Didn't read it you know, word for word. And yet I glanced through it. Three weeks later, I got another one, did the same thing. See, Barbara thought she was probably doing the right thing, sending out emails, having an email campaign. And yet, because the conversations weren't occurring, there wasn't a relationship there. It was just part of the email noise that, that we're a part of. So you want to make your marketing work. You want to make that all work. It begins with the conversation. Now, let's go back to what Barbara did in that conversation that made that conversation so powerful. And I'm going to go ahead and go back to my screen. And you will notice very clearly that I got forded by Barbara. And she used the Ford method, family and friends. She asked about Shelly. She opened with occupation. She asked about bold. Recreation, what are you guys doing for fun in San Antonio? What are you enjoying about San Antonio? Dreams, goals, future plans. She asked about any big trips we had. And we talked about the trip to Egypt. And using this little model, we have the powerful conversation that led to me feeling completely connected with Barbara, completely in flow. And now it's making her marketing work. So I share with you this just to demonstrate the power of Ford. And in a conversation with somebody, you don't have to go through all four elements of Ford. It just happened that that's the way this one kind of played out um, very authentically, very organically. Uh, it's where it went. Now, let's talk about your care call. And I'm going to give you a framework for your care call. And we're going to call it the Ford sandwich. This is something we teach in our never ending referrals program. And let me take you down how this works. And you'll want to make some note of this and we'll do it in the context of a care call. And so let me first give you the framework and then I'm going to walk you through it. And so we go through, uh, and there's another component here I don't have on this slide. And that is, um, I'm going to open the conversation, excuse me, I'm going to open the conversation with part of the reason I'm calling. And because I don't want the transition to the business part to seem awkward. So since in this Ford conversation, there's going to be a business component um, and it's a care call and I already know where I'm going with the business portion. Uh, here's what the opening is going to be. The opening is going to be if I'm calling Barbara, I go, hey, Barbara, Steve Schleter over at Keller Williams. How you doing? And she goes, hey, great, Steve. Thanks for calling. What's up? I'm going, hey, well, I just wanted to give you a little business update on some things going on in real estate. I've been obviously talking to some of our clients and friends, and there, there seems to be a lot of confusion out there about you know, the direction of interest rates, what's the market going to do. And I thought I'd give you a little update on things. And before I get into that, though, now here's where the framework comes to play right here. Before I get into that, though, then I'm going to ask a forward question. You know, how are things going over at Dell? if she works at Dell Computer, or, hey, I saw on Facebook blank, and I'm going to ask a Ford question. And then, the memory, it's a question, not a statement. I'm going to ask a Ford question. When she replies, I'm going to ask an appropriate follow-up question. So maybe I saw that they just took a tr trip to Garner State Park. I said, ah, how, was, how was your trip out to the Hill Country? I saw that you, you guys took a fifth wheel out to Garner State Park. Uh, did you enjoy that? We've never camped out there. And she goes, yeah, and this and this. And I'm like, what was the best thing about it? You know, and how long did you stay? So that would be appropriate follow-up question. And then I could ask another forward question if I chose and then do the same thing, appropriate follow-up question. If they're high social, I might do that. If they're more deliberate, I might stick to one. And then I go, hey, well, so let me tell you again why I called. You know, it, there's a lot of confusion you know, out there in the real estate market, the media doesn't help. And of course, because real estate's local. And I'm just curious, what are you hearing about the real estate market? That's the vital question. Write that one down. 
what are you hearing about the real estate market? And the, the power of that question is you're going to get to do one of two things. You're either going to validate or you're going to educate. Write that down. You're going to validate or you're going to educate. The validate is they have a good assessment of what's really going on in the real estate market and industry locally. Uh, and that I'm going to validate it. And I'm going to validate it by giving them the evidence that supports uh, that they are right so that, again, they I'm hitting the logic piece a little bit here that they know that I'm clear and I'm making their, their, their guess or, or their assessment accurate. The other opportunity to educate is maybe they say something like, well, yeah, I'm kind of excited. Uh, you know, a friend was telling me that interest rates are going to come down this next, you know, this next year because of an election year and that rates usually come down. And now this is going to be an opportunity to educate. In fact, in our next video, we're going to go through how do you educate somebody around the likely future direction of interest rates. And in this case, if I'm going to educate, I might say, you know, I'm, I'm hearing that quite a bit. There's that belief out there. And, and uh, you know, I would love to talk to you more about that if, if, if you guys have a real estate need, because, you know, our assessment um, is a bit different than that, because we're finding that the government today is more fearful of inflation than they are higher mortgage rates. But let me ask you the question, um, this question, and that is this, um, you, you obviously are watching interest rates and, you know, do y'all have any inklings to maybe dabble into the real estate market the next 12 to 24 months? And the reason I ask, there's some very unique opportunities in our market right now today, if the situation's right for, for certain individuals. And so let me ask you, were you guys pondering any real estate moves in the next 12 to 24 months? And now that's an offer, you know, and, and, and well, it, it's, it's still a message. And yet it's the beginning of an offer is that they say, yes, we would really like to get a bigger home because this one was, is really, we, we're outgrowing our home. And I said, well, here's what we ought to do. Why don't we schedule a no obligation strategy session? I can kind of educate you on where the market is going right now, the opportunities of the market, what we believe the future of interest rates are, and how the combination of this market and today's interest rates can actually create a, a very good situation right now uh, if we can put you in the right circumstances, what would be a great time for us to get together? And I'm going to schedule a strategy session. And now I'm going to close out the conversation, the care call. And now we go into this next piece. I'm going to go back to Ford. And so I've scheduled our no obligation strategy session. And I say, so, so gosh, well, I'll tell you what, here's what I would love to do, Barbara. Um, we'll get that scheduled on the calendar. I'll send you a calendar confirmation. Um, before I let you go, to, you know, tell me what uh, what kind of big plans you guys have coming up for fall. Doing anything exciting? And Barbara's going to say whatever she says. And I'm going to ask an appropriate follow-up question. And then I'm going to close out the call. Say, Barbara, it's so great to catch up. I look forward to meeting with you and Bill, you know, to kind of talk strategy with you next week. Um, in the meantime, if there's anything I can do to serve, you know, that we're always here and that's the end of the call. And let's follow that framework again. I'm going to kind of introduce the topic of the call. Hey, I've had a lot of folks, been talking a lot of folks, a lot of confusion out there. I thought I'd give you a little update, go into a forward question, appropriate follow-up question, transition to the purpose of the call. And none of that's going to be weird because you already said you were going to have that conversation and then close it with a forward question and an appropriate follow-up question. This is going to make it seem very personal. It's going to make it uh, very conversational. And it's going to add that care element. And at the same time, you're setting up an opportunity to bring the logic uh, with you know, the opportunity when you get to the kitchen table and educate them on the market if they have a need. Now, the person who said, well, no, we don't have any plans. I had just heard that at a card game and you know, um, you know, we're, we're pretty happy here where we are. So, well, that's fantastic. And Hey, I tell you what, and if you do know anybody that, you know, might have a real estate need, there are some really unique opportunities in the market. And I might just highlight one, you know, a lot of people don't know that even though, you know, the rates out there quoted at, at you know, at seven and, you know, five eighths percent that you can actually get like five and seven eighths right now in some situations with builder or seller concessions and, 
that probably isn't going to be around much longer. So if, if you know of anybody that has a need, understand that there are some opportunities out there that are very unique to this market and we'd love to serve them. And, and then I would just, again, transition to my closing forward question and go from there. So last thought on this, on the care call, is that for the folks that you've not been in touch with for a while, just change how you open it a little bit. And if I'm calling Mary, and Mary is somebody I've not been in touch with for three years. Uh, now, first off, here's the thing. They're not sitting there waiting for, when is that Steve Schleter going to call me? I haven't heard from that guy in three years. Folks, they're not thinking about you. They're, they're busy with life. You're not on their mind. They, they've moved on past real estate right now. Um, you just want to make sure you're on their mind when they get back to thinking about real estate. And now we want to get back in their life because we want to be that advisor right now so they know whether they should or shouldn't get into real estate uh, or you know, get their referrals. And so when I call Mary, I'm going to go, hey, Mary, Steve Schleter over at Keller Williams. So like, hey, man, I, I've, I, you've been, I, we haven't talked in so long. You've been on my mind. In fact, I saw on Facebook the other day that you had just blank, whatever blank is, you know, tell me that looked like so much fun. What kind of experience was that? And I go straight into a forward question. And, you know, she talks about that and I go, you know, and, and Mary, by the way, part of my reason to call today is there's, there's so much confusion, you know, out there in the real estate industry today in the real estate market. And people are going, or is the market going to go down? Is it going to go up? What are interest rates going to do? And I wanted to make sure I checked in with everybody, kind of gave them a real estate update. And uh, just curious, what have you been hearing about the market? And she's going to say whatever she says. And, and again, I'm, I'm telling him, I just wanted to check in with my peeps. And I go right into that same model, close it out with a forward question. So we could keep it that conversational element. And I can have that conversation. This is a be of service conversation to educate people. So in our next video, we're going to tackle the interest rate conversation. So that person who says that, you know, I think interest rates are going to come down uh, in the election year. Um, or they're not even sure about what interest rates are going to do, but yet they'd like to do something in real estate. What's the interest rate conversation? How do we help people understand that waiting might not be beneficial for them and to get in the market today? And that'll be the focus of our next video, how we educate on interest rates.